Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Viveza 2 by Nick Software. As you can see, I already have the program open with an image. In this video, I'm just gonna give you an overview of some of the major features that are available in Viveza 2. In our next video, I'm gonna show you how to use Viveza 2 as a Lightroom plugin. And in that video, I'll get into a little more detail about some of these features. And then in the video after that, I'm going to show you how to use Viveza 2 as a Photoshop plugin, and I'll cover some more features in detail in the program. So by the end of these three videos, you should be a Viveza 2 expert. Now, as far as this image, I did send it into Viveza 2 from Lightroom. It was a raw file in Lightroom, and the only processing I did was lens correction. So we're really going to be processing the image just about from scratch here in Viveza 2. Now, as far as the Viveza workspace, it's a pretty typical NIC workspace, except there's no presets. So when you send an image into Viveza 2, you have to process it from scratch. Along the top, we have some different views. I'll show you those in a moment. And along the top right... We have, you know, the hand tool to move it around and we could zoom in and out. And then we have uh, this little button here to change the border coloring from different shades of gray. And this little button will close down this panel, which are, is our adjustments panel. And that's what we'll be talking about right now. Now, right along the top, you could see there's control points. And that's one of the major features of Nick software are control points. Below that are some global adjustments. You can see it says global and there's a bunch of sliders there. Now, if you don't see all these sliders, there's these little buttons to the right of where it says global. You may be in this mode where it's only showing four sliders. If you are, just click that little button right next to that and you'll have all the sliders showing. Below that is our control point list, which you'll see in a moment when we start laying down some control points. Below that is levels and curves. We have the tone curve and we have some level sliders down at the bottom. And we'll cover that in this series. And then below that is a little loop. So wherever you hover over will be zoomed in on that loop. Or if you um, do like use a magnifier to zoom in, you'll get like a little view of where you are on that loop. Like trying to do it, there it is. There's a little box right there. There it is. See it? So that is what that means. And we'll zoom back out. Now, as far as processing is concerned, I mentioned that we have these sliders and it says global. Be aware that this will change from uh, global adjustments to control point adjustments. So right now, any adjustments I do, because it says global, will be done to the entire image. And some of these sliders are, are pretty basic sliders. I mean, brightness, you know what that does, right? You could uh, turn up or down brightness. If you want to reset a slider to its detent position, just double click right on the slider and it will reset it to, in this case, 
Uh, contrast, of course, will add or remove contrast. Saturation is color saturation. If you pull it all the way down, you'll have a black and white image. And if you push it all the way up, you'll have an oversaturated image. Structure is like um, clarity in Lightroom. So it's just going to give you some mid-tone contrast, which gives the effect of making the image sharper. If you pull it down, it's going to soften the image a little bit. So we'll reset that. Shadow adjustments just really adjust the shadows. If you uh, push this slider to the right, you'll open up the shadows. If you pull the slider down to the left, you're going to crush the shadows or make the shadows darker. Uh, warmth, if you move it to the right, you'll make the image warmer. If you move it to the left, you'll make it cooler. Now we have some colors, red, green, and blue. Well, if you move red, let's say, to the right, you're going to tinge the picture red. See how we're adding red to the image. Now when you move it to the left, you could say that you're taking red out of the picture, but really what's more accurate is you're going to be adding cyan to the picture. The way these color sliders work, the red, green, and blue color sliders, when you move them to the left, you're going to add the subtractive complementary color to that slider's color, meaning the subtractive complementary color of red is cyan. So when I move this to the left, we're going to add cyan to the image, or we're going to tinge the image cyan. The subtractive complementary color of green is magenta. So if I move this to the left, we'll start adding magenta to the image. And for blue, the subtractive complementary color is yellow. So when I move this to the left, we're going to add yellow to the image. Now, an easy way to remember that, you think of red, green, blue, you think of RGB. When you think of the subtractive complementary colors, you might have heard of CMY. That goes in order, red, green, blue, CMY. Cyan for red, magenta for green, yellow for blue. So that's a way you could remember it. Of course, you could just come in and slide the slider and go, oh, that's yellow. <laughs> of course. Hue. Uh, you could actually kind of alter the hue of all the colors by moving this around. It will give you some odd effects uh, since it's just one single slider. You could reset them all, of course, with that reset button. And we're going to talk about this dropper in a moment. That comes into effect when we're using actual control points. Now, as far as levels and curves, I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Quite often with uh, curves, which is what this diagonal line is, we like to use it to add contrast to the image. And what the curve represents, or what the diagonal line represents, is basically all the darkest tones are in this lower left-hand side. So blacks are down here. And as you start moving towards the right-hand corner of this box, we're going from blacks to shadows to darker midtones, to lighter midtones, to highlights, to whites. And if you want to make, let's say, the midtones brighter, you would put a point on the midtone and push it up, and it will make midtones brighter. If you want to make midtones darker, take that same point and pull it down. So you're going to um, alter the tones in a specific part of that curve. So Typically, we use, or often, we use a tone curve to add contrast to an image. And the way really all contrast is, is the dark parts get a little darker and the light parts get a little lighter. So what we often do is put a point right in the middle to anchor it. This anchors the midtones. Then we go down here where the darker shadows are, down towards the blacks. We'll put a point there and we'll pull that down. So we're going to make the darker tones a little darker. Then we go up here and we go where the highlights are, the lighter highlights, put a point there and push that up. So we're making the highlights a little lighter. So we, in effect, added contrast to the image by putting the curve into what is called an S-curve. And that's what we will often use that for. So we'll reset that. Then levels is you could just change uh, the midpoint of where uh, the midpoint of the midtones are or where the shadows are or where the highlights are. And again, I'll cover that in more detail in a future episode. But what we really want to do <clears throat> with this image is just show you how I process it using 
Viveza 2. Uh, we're not going to mess with the tone curve for this image. And as I mentioned, it's pretty much, even though Nick does not work on RAW files, this is a TIFF file. When you, and you'll see in our next video, we're going to send a RAW file from Lightroom into Viveza, and it first converts it into a TIFF file. All the only thing I did to the image was lens correction, so we're starting really from scratch. Now, brightness I think is all right. I want to add a little bit of contrast, so I'm going to move the contrast slider to the right. And again, these are global adjustments they're using or affecting the whole image. I'll add a touch of saturation. I'll move that to the right. Now I'm going to add a bit of structure as well. Remember structures like clarity and Lightroom. And uh, let's see, do I want to open up shadows a touch? Uh, no, I think actually my shadow adjustment, maybe we'll bring them down. Yeah, I'll bring shadows down just a little bit. And warmth. Uh, do I want to make it a little warmer maybe? Yeah, just maybe a touch warmer. Just a little bit. Now, I'm not going to do anything with uh, red, green, blue, or the hue. I'm going to work on that with control points, which we're going to do right now. So I want to add a control point to the sky. I want to make the blue sky bluer. Uh, because if I just came down here with the global adjustment and move blue to the right, it will make the blue sky bluer, but it's kind of putting blue everywhere, and I don't want that. So, excuse me, put that back. We'll reset that. There we go. I'm going to get a control point. So I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to go up in the blue sky over here in the left-hand corner and click it. Now you'll see we have all these sliders. These sliders are the exact same sliders you have over here. So you see that BR is brightness, CO is contrast, SA is saturation, ST is structure, structure um, SH is shadows adjustment, and so on. Now that very top one that's really not labeled, what that is, let me get a different, there we go. The very top one that isn't labeled, that is the size of the area of influence. You can see as I move it to the right, we're making this circle bigger. That means that's the area of influence that this control point is going to affect. Now, what exactly is it affecting? Well, when I brought that control point over and clicked it on that blue sky, right where that point is, the software is looking at the color, tone, and texture that is directly under that point. And in this area of influence, it's going to look for similar color, tone, and contrast. And that's what these sliders will affect. So if I take brightness down, it's going to effectively, hopefully, leave the white alone because I'm not clicked on the white clouds. It's not going to affect the green trees on the hill. It's only going to affect the color, tone, and texture of the blue sky right where I clicked. And it will mainly stay within that circle. Now it does affect a little bit outside the circle. It's kind of feathered outside. So that's how the control point kind of will allow you to mask your adjustment to a specific area. Now, I kind of like that. I brought, as you might have noticed, I brought brightness down. Now, if we jump over here to the right and we look at this area now, it no longer says global. It says selective. This is actually this control point. So I could come in here and I could just adjust this and you could see how it's adjusting that control point. Not, it's not a global adjustment anymore. So, I kind of like that, and I want to make it a bit bluer, so I'm going to go to blue, and I'm going to just tweak that up a little bit, okay? So, I like that. I'm going to bring that just down a touch. Now, I want to affect the entire blue sky, so I want to put one over here, uh, right here maybe. So, I could add just another one, click here and add another one, but I want to use the same settings, so why don't I just duplicate this one? The easiest way to do that is hold the Alt or Option key. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have Mac, then just click on that little button and drag one off. And you're going to drag a whole new one off. And you can put it over there. So now we have these two. And now I could adjust the size of this one independently of that one. And I could adjust all these settings alone. Now maybe I want to adjust them together. And as it is now, this one's selected, so I'm only adjusting that one. If I go over here on the right panel, I'll only be adjusting that one. So I'd like to adjust them together. There's three different ways to do that. One way is to just go outside of one of them and then click with your left mouse button and you see I'm drawing kind of a rectangle around the two of them. And once I do that and let go, you'll see they're both active. 
Now, any adjustment I do to one goes to the other one as well. Now, you see how I'm moving the contrast slider, and it's moving the contrast slider on the left one as well. Also, if I go over here to the selective adjustment area here, this contrast slider moves both of them as well. So that is one way you could um, uh, put them together more or less and adjust more than one control point. Now, another way is you could click on one, hold the shift key in and click on the other one. And if I had like five of these, I would just keep holding the shift key in and keep clicking on all of them. And now they're both selected again. And I could do it that way. Now, another way is you could go over here where we have our control points. And we have control point one is this one and control point two is that one. And I could just select them there by clicking on one. And because I have a Mac, I would hold the command key in. If you have a PC, you'd hold the control key in and click on that second one. Now they're both selected and you could do it that way. Now, if you have a bunch of control points that are doing the same thing, it may be beneficial to you to put them in a group because if we start adding lots of control points to an image, it gets confusing in the control point list. So what we could do is have them both selected like they are now and go right here where it says group and just click there and you can see that we now have group one. So whenever that is active, we're going to affect every single control point in that group and it will give you one representative um, control point that you could adjust that will adjust everything. So if I come in here and I go in like brightness crazy, you can see how it's adjusting all the, all, both of those control points. So that is how you would group them. And of course, you could ungroup them if you'd want right there. So I kind of like that. Now, I got this kind of white sky uh, cloud area over here that doesn't show really anything. I think it's a little bright, and I don't like that bright area near the corner of my frame. So I'm going to add a control point there. So I'm just going to click right there. And I'm going to bring brightness down on this. And just not too much because then it will start changing color on me. So I just want to bring it down a little bit and maybe bring um, structure up. Now you'll notice too that the, these adjustments are for the active control point, which is the cloud control point. I'll call it that, the cloud control point. It's actually control point three. Okay. So um, what did I say? Oh, structure. I want to turn structure up. Give me a little more structure in those clouds. So it gives a little more detail there. Now, if I want to see where that control point is affecting, if I go over here and I click this little box right there, whatever is white is what is being affected by that control point. Whatever is black is not being affected. If it's gray, depending on the shade of gray, that's varying effect. So a very light gray is affected more than a very dark gray. So I'm pretty much with this control point, as you could see, just affecting those clouds. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I could click that other control point group up there and we'll see the blue sky. It's affecting the blue sky mainly, but you could see how it bled over into some other things. So that is one um, kind of fault, I guess, with control points. They're not perfect, but they really do overall, they'll do a good job. Now, I want to do something with these grasses. I want to, what I often like to do to add some um, kind of tonal depth, I mess with the colors uh, intensity a little bit or the luminance values of the color. Meaning, especially with grass, I like to make the yellows that are in the grass a little brighter and the greens a little darker. And you could do that here. I'm going to get a control point. I'm going to go right on something that's kind of more yellow, like right there. All right. So now this, the, I could do these sliders right here, but I like going up over here. I just think it's easier to see what I'm doing. And um, I'm going to take saturation and I'm going to pull that up. Now, I, hopefully I'm on yellow and I could check that in a moment. Um, take brightness up a little bit. And I could click on that control point and hopefully it's mainly getting yellow. Now, while that is on this kind of negative view, I could kind of move it around and, and see if I could better. There, that's better, isn't it? I'm more on those yellow uh, tips of those grasses. So I think that's better. Uh, the grass in the background, that cut lawn, that was more yellow than it was green. So that's, that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. So we'll turn that off. So I kind of made that yellow. I could come in here. 
maybe make it even a little brighter. Now, I mentioned that we have this eyedropper and color swatch thing here. What you could do with the eyedropper is you could, whatever that control point is on, you could make it a color you want. How you do that? Well, with the eyedropper, click on the eyedropper, and let's say I want to make whatever that control point is controlling blue. So I'll go up here in the blue sky and click on the blue sky. And you'll see that it actually more or less made that area that the control point is uh, controlling, it added blue to it. Now, obviously, I don't like that. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. If you have a PC, it's Control Z to undo it. So that's that color dropper. Uh, the other thing you do is you click right on the color swatch. And this, uh, what will pop up here is dependent on your operating system. If you use a Mac, you'll get this color picker where you could switch around and you could actually just kind of pick a color like I want it to be purple, like that, and just like that. Close that down. There, now it's purple. I don't like that, of course, so I'm going to Command Z out of that, hopefully. Okay, it wouldn't let me Command Z out of that one for some reason to undo it. There we go. That's better, but we kind of lost our adjustment, so I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to turn brightness up. I'm going to make sure that uh, this is over a yellow. Bear with me. That's pretty good. There. And so that's good. Let's just say for the sake of this demonstration that that's good. So I added a little um, depth tonally by taking the yellows of the grasses and make those a little brighter yellow. Then what I'll often do is I'll make the greens, the things that are more green in the grass, a little darker. So I'll get another control point, and I'll go somewhere like here, let's say. And again, I think I'll turn this on to look at that and make sure that I'm kind of more on green. Yeah, I think that's pretty good right there. So I'll turn that off. And then what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to pull brightness down. So I'm kind of making the greens a little darker and the yellows a little brighter. Now I got some yellows over here that I'd like to do that too. So I'm going to duplicate this control point by holding the Alt or Option key in. Alt if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, and drag this over here and make sure I'm just on those yellows. So I think that looks pretty good. And um. I think I like it. I think I like it. Now we'll do a before after. There's um, three different ways you could do that. If you click right here in the top left hand corner, we get the split screen. And you could come in here and you could go, there's before and there's after. Before, after. So quite a dramatic difference. If I click right here, we'll get an over under view. Let's see, there's um, before above it and after below it. And if I click this, we'll get a side by side with before on the left, after on the right. Or if I go back to this single image view where it says preview right here, if I click off this box, you can see there's before, and there's after, before, after. Now, I could group those green control points if I want, and I could group those yellow control points. That's what I'm calling them, though, the control points that, um, that control that yellow. So I could click on this one. I'd hold the shift key in and click on this one. And then I could get a group here and group those together. Then what I could do is I could click on this uh, green one here. That's all by itself. So I really don't need to put that in a group. But let's say I wanted to make another green control point for something, um, which I really don't. I kind of like the way it is. But if I did, I'd hold that alter option key again in, in again, drag one up here. I'll make this small so it's only affecting those hills. I'll hold the Alter Option key in again, drag over to this, this side, maybe hold it in again and drag it over here. So I have uh, four green control points, I'm calling those. So I could hold the Shift key in and select them all like I just did. It's a little harder to draw that box like I showed you the first way you would kind of group two together because I got some of these yellow ones in here as well. And you might incorporate those accidentally into your selection. But what you could do is you could either hold the shift key in and click on each individual control point or 
hold the command or control key and again it's command if you have a Mac control if you have a PC and click on them over here in the uh, control uh, point list but I prefer actually this way because I know exactly which ones I'm doing so I'll hold the shift key in and click on that one that one I think that's all I had right so I have all those selected and I'll group those together so those are the green group so again, I could come now in and readjust my representative one of those four green control points is right here. So I could come in here and uh, adjust those accordingly with that one adjustment uh, right there or this over here where it says selective adjustments there. So that's kind of um, Viveza 2 in a nutshell. Uh, get you an idea what you could do with it. Again, um, Let's do a before and after. There's before, after, before, after. Um, I think it's a pretty powerful program. You could do quite a bit with it. In our next episode, again, we're going to start in Lightroom. I'm going to show you how to send an image directly from Lightroom into Viveza 2. And we'll get into a little more detail about some of these adjustments and what you can do and some of the limitations, I think, of the adjustments as well. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.